Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So what I wanted to talk about today is that in my opinion, coding is one of the best jobs that you can have today. You have the ability to work from anywhere you want. You can work from home, you can work from an office, you can make a good amount of money, you can work on some very interesting things for some very cool companies. And the best part is, is that anyone these days can learn how to code and all you need is a computer, and some internet, right? You can go to university, you can get a degree and learn how to code that way, which is the more traditional way, that's what I did. You can also go to like a boot camp, which is like a university, but it's a lot more accelerated and it is still pretty expensive, but you can go from not learning how to code to getting your first job within like six to 12 months. There's also a ton of resources on YouTube, some are free. You can buy a course online, which is like still pretty expensive, but not as expensive as a university degree or a boot camp. Or you can just, you know, go full self-taught, find stuff online, build some things and teach yourself how to code for completely free, right? And that is one of the greatest things and what I wanted to talk about today is how I would learn to code if I had to restart today. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the mindset you have to get into when you're learning how to code. Right, so when I started learning how to code, I had a pretty pessimistic outcome. Like I would try a couple of things. If it didn't work, I would get super frustrated. I would give up. Then I would start working on something else. And like that, I'm bouncing around from, th from one thing to another, from one project I had to another one. I never finished any of them. And then, you know, what ended up happening is that I stunted my growth and I didn't like progress as quickly as I, as I could have, right? But from the get go, what you want to adopt is the mindset of a software developer, right? What does that mean? Is that you really have to be a problem solver. That's all it boils down to when, when talking about like what, is, what are the most important traits for a software engineer? All it is is that you need to know how to problem solve. You need to understand that every problem has a certain solution and it's just gonna take a lot of trial and error to get there. There's gonna be times where you're up to like three or 4 a.m. It's happened to me many times, you know, you're super late. You do have no idea what's going on and you're trying solution after solution, nothing's working. But the thing is you cannot give up because there is a solution out there. A lot of problem solvers, what they do is like, if you have one big problem you need to solve, you can break it down into a list of small, more actionable items that make it a lot easier to solve and a lot more realistic. That's one of the things that I learned and that helped me a lot in terms of mindset is that you, you can't just approach one big problem without a plan. You have to break it down, make it into a small list of items and just tackle them one by one. And before you know it, you're like halfway there to completing the whole solution, right? Another important thing when it comes to computer science is being humble. You can't just walk into a room thinking that you're the best at a certain topic, at a certain language, whatever it is. You can't walk in thinking you're the best, thinking that you know everything because there's always going to be something you don't know. There's always new things that are being built there's something you have to learn and if you have this mindset that you're never wrong and and everyone else is wrong you're always right you're the best it's going to be more detrimental to you down the way because you're going to be like closing your eyes to, to, to other solutions and to other things that you could see right the next thing i would do is learn one language very deeply you don't want to be going from one language to another because then you're not going to get good at anything you're going to do like a basic javascript tutorial then a basic python tutorial and name any language if you do a lot of tutorials of different languages you're going to end up wasting your time and you're not going to be good at any of them you want to pick one language find a you know course online if it's free if you want to pay for it whatever you want but find it in an, like an intensive course and start it go from start to finish do the whole thing just for one language and then you know we can move on to the next part if you don't know what language you want to start with I would just recommend go with JavaScript because it lets you work on different layers of an application you can work on the front end as well as the back end of an application even the database side of things all using JavaScript and so if you learn this one language, it'll kind of give you exposure to a lot of different things, whereas other languages are just for the front end or just for the back end. JavaScript lets you work on everything, which I think is really good for a, for a beginner to get exposure to all these different sides of programming. But if you don't want to do JavaScript and you have no idea how to pick, just think about the things that you would like to build. If you want to build an iOS app, just Google, you know, what, what languages do I need to know to be an iOS developer? find that language, then find a course for that language and go from there. It's probably gonna be Swift or like React Native. But the, the most important thing is you pick one language, you get really good at this one language, and then you can move on from there. And what does that mean? Is that you build your own personal project, right? The best way to learn and the only way, in my opinion, that you can really become a good developer is if you're constantly actually coding. And the easiest way to do that is to kind of think of an idea that you want to build and then build it. Start with something very simple, then you can iterate and make it more complex over time. But all, what you really want to do is just get started coding. It can be 30 minutes, it can be an hour a day, but what you want to do is just, you know, start and keep up this habit of coding. Because if you're not, if you're coding once or twice a week, 
and then five days a week you're not coding. When you, when you sit back at your desk to start off again, you're gonna be starting from zero. You're gonna, you're gonna look at this code that you wrote like a week ago. What does it mean? You have no idea what it means, where you left off, what, what was the problem that you were facing at the time. You need to keep track of these things and if you're coding every day, it makes it a lot easier. So an easy way to you know, force yourself to work on a project is you can sign up for a hackathon. You can go online, there's tons of hackathons happening all the time. And basically what this does is it forces you to build a project, right? Because you have to, you have like 48 hours to build something to solve a certain problem. And then at the end of those 48 hours, you present it to a panel of judges and you know, they roast you if it's complete garbage or if it's an amazing app, then you know, they give you all the compliments in the world, you can win a prize or something. There's also a lot of projects on GitHub that are open and that have issues and bugs that are being tracked. And what you can do, and a great way to learn how to code in my opinion, is to you know, go on GitHub, find one of these projects. If there's a bug open that seems relatively simple, you can go fix it, clone the repository, you know, implement the fix, then commit it, push the code review, and you know, you've basically there simulated what an actual developer does. And you know, it kind of lets you work on something without fully setting it up, without making the infrastructure, without setting up the environment and all these kind of things. You can, you can just kind of like work on one small part of a bigger project, right? But like I said before, like with JavaScript, if you pick a project you want to work on, pick something that has a front end, has a back end, ideally has an API or, and like some sort of database so that you're really getting exposed to every single part of development. You're not just working on a UI, but you're working on how things are working on the back end as well. And I think that if you're working on all of these things at once, it'll just make your progress a lot faster. The next two things are things that like I ignored personally. I didn't think they were as important when I was starting off. They seemed sketchy to me. You know, you have to go in the terminal and type all these commands. And I thought, you know, I would just learn that later. And I kept pushing it off when I was a student. But like, you know, the more I coded and the more experience I got, the more I realized that, you know, these are extremely valuable. And what I'm talking about is learning Git and using the terminal. Git is used in the industry for version control. And what that basically means is like, it's like a save game, load game for video games. You have your code in a certain state, you wanna commit it, you wanna save it so that it doesn't get lost. At the end of the day, when you're done the feature, you wanna push that code so it gets merged into like the actual live repository where things are actually going on, right? So when you get your first job and you're working as part of a team, it's inevitable that you're gonna be exposed to some sort of version control, right? When a lot of different developers are working within the same code base, it's really important that everything is tracked, that you can revert back if something breaks. And Git is one of the best ways to implement all of this. And there's really only a couple of commands that are crucial, you know, git pull, merge, rebase, commit, and git push are probably the main ones you can get super technical and super deep into Git, but if you know those, you're probably good for most things. But I just wanna emphasize that in, the, in like a real workplace, everyone's using Git. You know, it's really important that you can make a change, that you can revert backwards, and just overall, it's just another good thing to have in your tool belt when you're a developer, because it'll make your life a lot easier. And the other thing I wanna talk about is the terminal. I neglected this as well. I always thought the terminal was just pointless if I have a UI, but using a terminal can make everything just so much more efficient. It's a lot quicker than clicking on things, than dragging things, you know, moving it to the trash bin. Things like, you know, removing files, navigating to different directories. Using the terminal, you can connect to other virtual machines. The terminal makes it super easy to download third-party libraries that you can implement into your own code. You can use things like NPM to, with one line, download a ton of different libraries that you can use on your own personal project and you don't have to impl implement them yourself. Using the terminal, you can also open editors and basically, you know, if you want to move a file somewhere, then open it up, make a change, save it, commit it, push it again. You can do that all in the terminal. Whereas if you weren't using the terminal, it'll take you substantially longer. And plus, if you're using the terminal and someone that is not a software engineer is looking at your computer, they'll think you're a hacker or something because it's like the generic black screen with green white text that seems like you're hacking into the mainframe, you know? So guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you do all these things, I guarantee that you'll have a lot of success when you're learning how to code. I wish someone told me some of these things, specifically the mindset stuff. I think I would have done a better job like early on for sure if I had the right mindset and, I, and that I wasn't giving up as easily, right? So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Leave a comment down below if you think there's anything I missed. And if you guys have enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe to the channel. It would just absolutely make my day. And as always, guys, take it easy and enjoy your coding.